The trigger object is a great way to organize your patches, especially when one event or message causes several other events to happen in a specific order. As you know, max objects output in right to left order. Let's attach a button to three print objects with arguments one, two, and three. We lock the patch, send them all a bang, and we see the order in the max window. First one, then two, then three. Although this is a reliable way of determining order, it does have one pitfall. If you build a patch that depends on things working in a certain order and then move things around, the order might change. Let's clear the max window by clicking on this little X. Unlock the patch, move print one to the left, lock the patch, then click on bang again. Now we see that print two happens first and print one happens last. In other words, we've changed the behavior of the patch without making or breaking any connections, just by rearranging things. For that reason, relying on right to left order to organize your patch can be risky. Now let's create a trigger object. By default, it has two outlets. If we give it three arguments, B, B, and B, it has three outlets. Each argument creates an outlet. We connect our prints and verify that it works. When we move print 1 to the left, the order doesn't change. So this is a great technique for keeping a patch working even if you rearrange it later. In fact, trigger is so useful that there's a shortcut for it. Just type the letter T. Trigger can do another very useful trick. It can change message types. Max messages can be symbols, like the special bang message. Lists, for example, one, two, three. Floating point numbers or floats, like 3.14, or integers, like 42. Let's create a new trigger object with a single argument, i, for integer, by typing t, i. We attach its outlet to the right inlet of a message object so we can see its output without having to look at the max window. Now let's send it floats using the flowNum object. When we send a floating point number, trigger converts it to an integer by simply slicing off the fractional part. So 3.14 becomes just 3. Here's a simple example using trigger. We would like to send our patch a stream of numbers and have it calculate the difference between each incoming number and the previous number. Let's start with a number object, followed by a TIIB object, then an integer object, a minus object, and another number object. Let's hook it all up to see if it works. If we select the top number object and use the keyboard's arrow keys, we can increase the value by 1 or decrease them by 1. How does it work? Each new number triggers a bang to the left inlet of the integer object, which outputs the previously stored number, sending it to the right inlet of the minus object, where it's stored. Then the trigger object sends the number to the right inlet of the integer object, where it is stored. Finally, the trigger sends the number to the minus object, where the previous object is subtracted from it. Increasing the input by 1 outputs 1. Decreasing outputs negative 1. We can try this with a few more arguments, T, B, F, I, L, for bang, float, integer, and list. Attaching message boxes to each outlet, let's see how trigger tries to convert messages, even when the solution is not obvious. For example, a list passes through the list outlet unchanged, but the integer and float outlets send only the first element of the list, and the bang outlet always sends a bang. A list can also consist of a list of symbols, like the words apple, orange, banana. In this situation, the list outlet and the bang outlet react the same way. A list passes through the list outlet unchanged. The bang outlet always sends a bang, but the integer and float outlets just send default values of zero. After all, how can you assign a number to a symbol? This just shows that converting types is not always straightforward. If we send a bang, we also get zero out the integer and float outlets, but the list outlet is bang. Why? 
Well, the bang message is really just a symbol, so the bang message passes unchanged through the list outlet. Trigger's list outlet can pass anything, which can be convenient sometimes. In fact, the list outlet can even pass audio. Let's try running cycle tilde's signal through a TBL object and hook up scope tilde to the list outlet. We add an easy DAC tilde object and turn on the audio. The signal passes out the list outlet just fine, and a bang is output each time the audio is turned on. So trigger can get weird if you want it. There's one more kind of argument that trigger can use. So far we've looked at arguments that define a certain message type. You can also use an argument that is just an instance of a particular type. In other words, a constant or a symbol. Here's an example where we send the name of a sound file that's in Max's search path to T0S. The name of the file is a symbol, so it passes out the right outlet. The prepend object adds the word replace before the file name. Then it is sent to the buffer tilde slayer object. The replace message not only loads the sound, but also resizes the buffer tilde automatically to the length of the sound. The groove tilde slayer object receives a constant signal from the sig tilde one object, which sets the playback speed of the sample. Trigger's left outlet outputs the number zero whenever any input is received, and that tells Groove tilde to play the sound from the beginning. So every time we send a new sound file name, the sound is played. Whenever one max message triggers several actions, Trigger keeps everything organized. Get in the habit of using it and you'll experience less frustration and more fun.